Imagine a world where a giant supernatural worm threatens to cause earthquakes, and the only thing that can stop it is a young girl named Suzume and a person named Soda who transform into a three-legged chair. This unusual duo must travel across the country, tracking down a mischievous cat Daijin, who holds the key to stopping the worm. Along the way, they encounter a cast of characters who help them on their journey, including a local bar owner and Suzume's Aunt Tamaki. Through a series of surreal and mystical adventures, Suzume and Soda must navigate the Ever After. Ever After is a strange realm where souls go after death in order to save the world from destruction. With twists and turns at every step, this fantastical tale is one which will keep you on the edge of your seat until the very end. Now let's start the movie. Suzume Iwato is a young high school girl who lives with her aunt Tamaki in Kyushu. One night, she dreams of searching for her mother as a child in a ruined neighborhood. The next morning, while headed for school, Suzume encounters a young man Soda, searching for abandoned areas with doors. She tells him about an old onsen resort nearby, then follows the man herself to the resort. Suzume finds a door standing alone on its frame, which shows a starlit field through the doorway, but she is unable to enter it. She picks up a cat statue which becomes a real cat and flees. Frightened, she heads back to school. During lunchtime, Suzume notices a blaze-like column arising from the side of the onsen that nobody else can see. Returning there, she finds Soda, trying to close the door. Seeing him struggle and get injured, Suzume rushes to help. They successfully close the door and the red column disappears, without crashing invisibly into the town and causing earthquake-like damage. Suzume takes the man, Soda Munakata, to her home to bandage his wound. He explains that he travels across Japan, finding and locking doors in abandoned places to prevent a giant supernatural worm from causing earthquakes. But then the cat from the resort appears and turns Soda into the three-legged chair. Soda, now a three-legged chair, chases the cat to a ferry headed for Ehime with Suzume following. He describes to Suzume the cat as a keystone and that the worm was released after its removal from near the abandoned door. At Ehime, the pair use clues on social media from locals who have photographed the cat and named it Daijin to follow it across Shikoku. With the help of local resident Chika, they find the worm and close its door of entry at an abandoned school. Following Daijin's trail to Kobe thanks to Rumi, a local bar owner, the duo encounter the worm re-emerging at an abandoned amusement park. Soda demands that Daijin turn back into a keystone, but he refuses, wanting to play with Suzume. She and Soda lock the worm's portal. Soda explains the portal leads to the ever after where souls go after death. After this they spend the night at Rumi's bar, and it is revealed that Soda is losing his sense of self in his chair form. After tracking Daijin to Tokyo, Soda takes Suzume to his apartment. He explains the myth of the worm Namazu, and how it is pacified by the placement of two keystones in eastern and western Japan. The western keystone has become the cat Daijin, while records of the eastern keystone's location are obscure. Daijin reappears and reveals that he had passed on his function as a keystone to Soda's chair form. After finding the re-emerged worm, Soda turns into a keystone in Suzume's hands, leaving Suzume to seal it away. She does so and wakes up in a water cave housing Tokyo's doorway. Peering into the ever after, she sees the keystone Soda but again cannot enter to reach him. Daijin approaches Suzume excitedly, telling her that he can be her cat now. Instead, Suzume furiously grabs Daijin and nearly throws him, before dropping him into the water and telling him to never speak to her again. Heartbroken, Daijin walks away. After this, Suzume visits Soda's grandfather at the hospital. He explains that Suzume's ability to see the worm and the ever after through the doors means that she has accidentally entered the realm once before. Moreover, the doorway that she first used is the only place where she can re-enter the ever after and save Soda. Reuniting with her aunt Tamaki, who followed her from Kyushu, Suzume travels to her childhood hometown in Tohoku, which was destroyed in the Tohoku earthquake with the help from Soda's fellow university classmate and friend, Tomoya Serizawa whom she met at Soda's apartment. At a rest stop along the way, Suzume discovers that her aunt Tamaki was possessed by Sadaijin, another mysterious eastern keystone. After coming to her senses, Tamaki takes Suzume to her old house where she once lived with her mother, Tamaki's sister, a nurse who was killed in the tsunami. Suzume finds her old door and enters with Daijin and Sudaijin. She emerges in the Ever After, which appears as her town following the earthquake. While Sudaijin distracts the worm, Suzume awakens Soda, returning him to human form. Admitting defeat, Daijin returns to being a keystone. 
With Daijin and Sadaijin, Suzume and Soda reseal the worm, preventing it from leaving the Ever After. Soda then notices a child in the Ever After, Suzume from 12 years ago. Suzume remembers how she entered the Ever After as a child following her mother's death. She takes her childhood chair from the Ever After version of her home and gives it to her younger self. Young Suzume exits the Ever After with the chair. At the present time, Suzume and Soda leave the Ever After themselves. Now, Soda returns to Tokyo while Suzume and Tamaki return to Kyushu, revisiting the girl she met along the way. In the end, in Miyazaki, Suzume is on her way to school when she once again runs into Soda.